It'd be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> Hey, what's up, everyone? All right. Jazz Bergonzo here. Another What's Next, of course, as always, your daily dose. Well, something exciting happened yesterday at the White House. No, not dementia stepping down, nor not Kamala knee pads stepping down, or any other morons who surround the White House stepped down. You had actor, award winner, Matthew McConaughey, show up to the White House press briefing. Wow. What could it be possibly there for? Well, it turns out that a situation very personal to him, of course, involving Texas, involving the murder, uh, the census killings of 19 children and two adults in a mass shooting has hit home for him. And he's there to talk about it. Now, one or two things when we're referencing the Second Amendment. Most times it comes to either or. Now, He's suggesting a compromise. What could that be? Let's take a look. This comes out of Breitbart. At the White House, Matthew McConaughey calls for politicians to seize window of opportunity for gun control. Oh my. Actor Matthew McConaughey appeared at the White House press briefing on Tuesday, endorsing a series of gun control proposals that coincided with some of President Joe Dementia's radical agenda. As I said, this moment is different, McConaughey said while appearing at the White House briefing room. We are in a window of opportunity right now, and we have not been before. A window where it seems like real change, real change can happen. But what could they be? McConaughey said, as he spent time with the victims and families of the mass shooting victim in his hometown of Evaldi, Texas, last week. How can the loss of these lives matter? He said to reporters, while we honor and acknowledge the victims, we need to recognize that this time seems like something else is different. I'm going to play a little bit, but I'm just going to go through a uh, little bit of the, the wording here. McConaughey grew emotional as he shared the stories of children who were shot and killed during a mass shooting in elementary school. Uh, that would be Rob Elementary School in his hometown of Valdi, Texas. At points, tearing up and slapping the podium. He specifically called out AR-15 for mutilating the bodies of children, leaving them not only dead, but hollow. McConaughey said he was bringing a message from the people of his hometown. We want to secure and safe schools. We want gun laws. We want to make it so uh, we won't make it so easy for the bad guys to get these damn guns. He said. He also told reporters to restrain sensationalized sensationalized media coverage of mass shootings. Sorry, Matthew, not gonna happen. Responsible gun owners are fed up with the Second Amendment being abused and hijacked by some deranged individuals. Agreed. He said, calling for more gun laws to quote step forward and protecting gun rights. We are not as divided as we are being told, he insisted, calling for some middle ground on the gun issues. This should be a nonpartisan issue, he said. He criticized political figures in D.C. for failing to rise above their political calculations and demonstrate real courage in the support of gun control laws. We take a sober, humble, honest look in the mirror and rebrand ourselves on what we truly value. Let's hear it from his own words. Share my stories from my hometown of Uvalde. We came here to take meetings with elected officials on both sides of the aisle. We came here to speak to them, to speak with them, and to urge them to speak with each other. To remind and inspire them that the American people will continue to drive forward the mission of keeping our children safe. Because it's more than our right to do so. It's our responsibility to do so. I'm here today in the hopes of applying what energy, reason, and passion that I have into trying to turn this moment into a reality. Because as I said, this moment is different. We are in a window of opportunity right now that we have not been in before. A window where it seems like real change. Real change can happen. Uvalde, Texas is where I was born. It's where my, my mom taught kindergarten less than a mile from Rob Elementary. New Valley is where I learned to master a, a, a Daisy BB gun. I took that took two years before I graduated to a 410 shotgun. New Valley is where I was taught to revere 
the power and the capability of the tool that we call a gun. Uvalde is where I learned responsible gun ownership. Now, Uvalde called me on May 24th when I learned the news of this devastating tragedy. I had been out of cellular range working in the studio all day when I emerged, and messages about a mass shooting in the town I was born in began flooding my inbox. In a bit of shock, I drove home, hugged my children a bit tighter and longer than the night before, and then the reality of what had happened that day in the town I was born in set in. Ground above our political affiliations. A chance to make a choice that does more than protect your party. A chance to make a choice that protects our country now and for the next generation. We've got to take a sober, humble, and honest look in the mirror and rebrand re ourselves based on what we truly value. What we truly value. We've got to get some real courage and honor our immortal obligations instead of our party affiliations. Enough with the counterpunching. I just wanted to play a little bit of Matthew McConaughey's speech. Um, it was about, mm, give or take, about 10, 12 minutes long. Um, very heartfelt. It pulled at the heartstrings, and rightly so. Um, situation happens in the United States, you feel it. Situation happens in your state, you feel it a little bit more. Situation happens in your town, now it's truly hit home. And for Matthew McConaughey, it's heartfelt. It is no doubt that this is deep rooted in him and he loves his town dearly. A lot of so-called stars who make it big in Hollywood, make it big in New York, make it big in Paris, make it big in LA, tend to walk away from their towns. You know, they're too big for that. Well, there are certain stars who've stayed true to home. Bruce Willis, Clint Eastwood, Gary Sinise, and Matthew McConaughey. But when Matthew McConaughey, in all due respect, speaks in regards to compromise, he speaks about red flag laws. He speaks about extended background checks. He speaks about, you know, he didn't talk about magazine capacity. He didn't talk about um, illegalizing uh, certain guns. Well, of course, he speaks of the AR-15 being the one that he would. Um, he didn't go into the whole political mumbo jumbo of, you know, weapons of war or assault weapons. He didn't go into that. He spoke from the heart. And um, like I said, uh, God bless him and God bless the families uh, and those affected in Valdi, Texas. But compromise is a very fickle thing. Compromise for one means stripping the rights of away from the other. So yeah, um, as well-intended and good-intentioned his thoughts are, and they are, um, most of what he speaks is not going to have any way, shape, or pull in Congress. It's just not going to happen. Only because you got people who are so um, strong-minded and strong-willed in regards to their support of the Second Amendment, as I am one of them, that any kind of quote-unquote compromise, you know, you're just take it, trying to take away. Um, but there needs to be open speech. You know, enough of the finger pointing and blame gaming. But the fact of the matter is that's what DC is all about. DC is not about compromise. DC is not about debates and open discourse. It's all about, you know, how many knees can you cut off? For him to say this is a window of opportunity in regards to quote unquote votes come November. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Matthew. Love you. But um, when he mentioned those things, that was not an all right, all right, all right moment. With that being said, I'm Jazz Bargonzo. This is What's Next. Want to see more other like this? Please leave a comment below. Like it, share it, subscribe to it. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.